Ted Bundy is back in the spotlight, and with him comes renewed speculation as to why this smart, attractive, successful law student brutally murdered at least 30 people. Of course, as most of us are not deemed psychopathic, it can be difficult to understand from our perspective. Bundy did what he did partially because he lacked reason. For people like Bundy, subverting ethical norms can be reason enough. Yet, even a heart as cold as Terrible Ted's may have been at some point warm. Serial killers are created the same way as everyone else, but many things go wrong in the process. Here are eight reasons why Ted Bundy became a psychopath. 1. Genetics It's been long debated whether nature or nurture, genetics or upbringing, causes psychopathy. But nature and nurture are not in competition, they're partners. Together, they generate the antisocial traits that define the disorder. The answer then is both. Some killers have abnormal brain chemistry due to a defect in the MAOA gene, which causes, among other psychopathic benchmarks, hypersexuality and violent impulses. However, this genetic defect does not necessitate criminal behavior. Most people with MAOA deficiency do not become killers. This requires an extra push. 2. Trauma Here is where nurture comes into play. A handful of psychopathic murderers sustained traumatic injuries when they were children, like Albert Fish, who, at age 7, fell out of a cherry tree. As a result, Fish suffered from dizziness and headaches for the rest of his life, until he was executed for killing children. An autopsy of Ted Bundy's brain discovered no signs of trauma, but later research into MAOA concluded that Bundy might have been a victim. If this were the case, the gene's latent violence would have needed a traumatic catalyst. But trauma isn't always physical. Bundy had a childhood marred with turbulent events. When such events are experienced by someone with MAOA deficiency, a killer cocktail may result. 3. Family and Environment Nothing has more influence on a child's development than his or her family. At an early age, Bundy was entangled in a domestic conspiracy that made him believe that his grandparents were actually his parents. Not only that, but he was told his mother was his sister. His family's true identity was hidden from Bundy for many years. This was to protect the reputation of Bundy's actual mother, who was young and unwed. Bundy never knew his father. Nobody does. His identity was never determined. As a result, Bundy grew up resentful and mistrustful of the people who should have inspired absolute trust. 4. Isolation After Bundy's real mother came clean, she moved herself and Ted out of the house of lies. She wanted to give her son a fresh chance at a normal life, so she changed her identity yet again to separate her and Ted from her parents. This was further realized when she married a man named Johnny Culpepper Bundy, who gave Ted the name for which he'd be known. However, Ted's mother and Johnny had four of their own children, and they monopolized their parents' attention. Ted's frustration mounted as the very person that had him unwillingly separated from his parental figures now neglected him, and as a result, he withdrew. Already pathologically shy, Ted distanced himself from his family and peers and took refuge in a fantasy world where he wasn't a powerless victim of circumstance. In his mind, he could be anything he wanted. 5. Fantasy But Bundy's fantasy could not be sustained. He needed reality to take the shape of his ideal. Like so many troubled youths, he did this by acting out. A teenage Bundy started shoplifting, breaking into cars, and peeping into windows. Ironically, this was happening while Bundy was finally succeeding at life. He had become a popular student with good grades and a few friends, but this was all part of his narrative. Bundy relished appearing like a socialite while secretly committing crimes. This paradoxical identity is what attracts many serial killers. The identity crisis of his youth and the impotence of his personality were what made Bundy especially susceptible to dual identity possession. 6. Rejection Despite his social success, Bundy remained insecure. He couldn't detach from the grim facts of his life, particularly the fact that he was far less wealthy than his peers. Bundy desired wealth, love, and prestige, all the conventional measures of power. Perhaps if those didn't elude him, he wouldn't have become a serial killer, just another Fortune 500 executive. It ended up being a near miss. 
By enrolling in university, Bundy was on the road to both wealth and prestige. And love had materialized in the form of a University of Washington classmate. Bundy adored her, but she ended the relationship, and he was devastated. His obsessive nature caused him to overreact, and he dropped out of college and chased his fantasy on high gear, using them as a bulwark against the renewed impotence of his life. At 27, Ted's ultimate fantasy became a reality when he murdered 21-year-old Linda Ann Healy, his first known homicide victim, as revenge for his unrequited love, unrequited parents, and unrequited life. 7. Manipulation Bundy, like all psychopaths, was a liar who provided false and contradictory information to manipulate others into furthering his goals. You don't know what to believe about Bundy. That's what made him so scary. Did you enjoy our analysis of Ted Bundy? Would you like to see us analyze more people in our next video? If so, be sure to support us and tell us who you would like us to analyze next. It can be psychologists, celebrities, or even real-life events you personally encounter in your life. Just send us your story, and we will do our best to provide a thorough comprehensive review of them. Until next time, hope you learned something interesting from our content that you could take away. Don't forget to subscribe and watch our other videos on psychopathy.